You know the hosta is one of the greatest garden plants you can put in. It's an herbaceous perennial, meaning of course that all of this dies down every fall. But what foliage and form you can end up with in the landscape once you have them established. Usually hosta plants are sold in one gallon containers in the nursery. And although they may seem a little bit costly initially, they give you a tremendous amount of variety in the landscape. Take this one right here, that's the ventricosa type. It gets large. I've only had this in this spot for two summers. And in a few weeks, it's going to send up a flower spike that will stand about three and a half feet in the air, a tall white spike of flowers that is very appealing to certain insects as well. Then over beyond it, there's a smaller form. They come in different sizes. This one in the middle is called golden tiara. The golden tiara is not going to get very large at all. And it has a splash of yellow along the margins. It's very appealing. There's another type that's very common called albo marginata that has a white edge instead of a yellow edge. Then on beyond that, I've just planted one that is hosta ciboliana. And it is a blue form that has a, a blue bloom or waxy coating over the foliage and gives a totally different look in the landscape. All of them will bloom eventually, although some, like this, are more noted for their flowers than almost any other feature about them. Now, one problem people have with hostas is first of all, they try to plant them in full sun. And they really must have shade, a lot of organic matter, and plenty of moisture in the, in the soil in order to survive well. And they may not do very much for you the first year, but once they're established, they'll grow very well. If you look back under here, this plant could almost be divided now. It's clumped out into a bunch of different plants, and possibly next spring, when the buds are first coming up, I could dig that up and split it apart with a sharp spade and divide it. But probably I'll leave it right where it is for a few years. They may be wondering what this white stuff is down at the base of the plant. Well, when I'm walking around the garden doing some maintenance, if I'm going to work on the hostas, if I'm pulling weeds around them, I save up a few eggshells. These are from some hard-boiled eggs I had in the house. And I always tuck those back under around the plants. And the reason for that is that we have problems around here with snails, but we also have trouble with slugs. And a real common sign of damage that you'll find on hostas are nice, neat little holes. And I'm sort of proud to say that I haven't found any on these today, but slug damage on hostas will look like round to elliptical or oval-shaped holes in the plants. They climb up them at night and they chew on them. Well, if you put eggshells at the bottom of the plants, that really is a very good deterrent. They don't like crawling over the sharp edges of the eggshells, and it will help keep slugs at bay. So you might try that on your hostas, and certainly give this plant a try in your shade landscape this summer. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.